Hey everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms. We've got Matt back today. What's up guys? And we are in day two of our Swiss surplus specials or special you week. Did that well, yeah. I, I did it well this time. But anyway, yesterday we talked all about the top Swiss long guns and today we're talking about the short boys handguns. And tomorrow's gonna be shotguns. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Tomorrow's gonna be something else. But anyway, hey, what we're here to talk about are some classics and we're going with the old to the newest and we've got some revolvers here. And Matt, what can you tell us about these guys? So these are 1882 Swiss Ordnance revolvers, also uh, called the 1882-29 because of the revisions that were made, the upgrades that were made. So all of these are the more upgraded version. Uh, so they are in 7.5 ordnance mm -hmm. and they served for quite a long time. I'm thinking about 1882 through like the 50s. Yeah. Wow, that is that is a long time, yeah. that's for sure. So very cool revolvers and uh, neat functioning as well. So like for instance, when it comes down to loading the gun, you have this little action arm right here. Loading gate. Uh, yep. Loading gate, there we go, call it that. And you just kind of fold that down and now you can just load it. And then yes, you pull the trigger to rotate the cylinder. Load it, load it. But you also do in the same way with extracting the spent cartridge. You've got this little knurled in right here and this actually flips down, mm -hmm. boop just like that, and now you can just push it through, rotate, push it through, rotate, and something that I thought was really neat to see. And I think personally too that uh, that's actually a little bit more precise than kind of like what we're used to us Americans, you know, actually doing it all yeah. at once or whatever kind of else just it might be, or just on, uh, one at a time. Yeah, just kind of finding half cock and, uh, yeah. and manually rotating it. Uh, but yeah, I, I think it goes back to a different mindset. You know, early firearm makers didn't, kind of have the established rules that we do where you <laughs> right. don't want to touch the trigger unless you're firing the firearm. So they did things like, you know, the trigger revolves cylinder for reloading yeah. and unloading or in a, in a rifle, like maybe it's a bolt release to, to mm -hmm. load the gun. Uh, well, so there, yeah. there, there are some modern manufacturers that are like, well, you can still pull the trigger to, you know, remove the slide from the frame, but you know, talking about you Glock. <laughs> and, but it's still an effective way of disassembling the firearm and also loading it. But yeah, you do run into that potential safety issue, which is why you need to follow the other rules. Uh, quite simply, like, I don't know, make sure your firearm is clear before you do Have you seen the video with the have, guy in the yeah. back seat? Guys, practice the fundamentals and the safety. Just don't shoot yourself in the leg. Anyway, really cool revolvers. And you said these have seen service since the 1880s all up to the 1950s. Yep. Wow, that is awesome. Chambered in 7.5 ordnance, and I mean, again, a long service life, which is really neat. Let's just go ahead and show you the conditions that we've got on a few of these that we have available right now, if you guys are interested. And of course, we've got that cool looking Swiss shield right back here on the frame as well. So while you're showing on these details, so a couple of things about, again, since this is the updated version of it, uh, the barrels were originally octagonal. Uh, they actually started as black powder Mm. Uh, firearms, yep. and they are designed by like Colonel Schmidt, the same Schmidt as Schmidt Rubin. Rubin. Yeah. So there's a connection to the rifles we looked at yesterday. Oh, that's pretty neat. So very cool. And I'm also noticing like a little bit of difference in grips here. Mm -hmm. Yep. So these are all Bakelite grips. Uh, if you looked at some of the original 1882s, the older versions, they would have wood grips. Gotcha. Okay. Well, very neat. Very, very cool, guys. So again, make sure you head on over to ClassicFirearms.com to check out all of our Swiss surplus, the stuff that we talked about yesterday, stuff, or more so the thing we'll be talking about tomorrow. And uh, he's so subtle. <laughs> oh, I'm it's super great. subtle. Yeah, I'm, I'm Can you guess excited. what it's going to be? Yeah, I don't know. I'm pretty excited about that one, all right? Uh, not to, you know, overshadow our current giveaway, the Styrog, of course, but just saying. But anyway, all right, cool. Let's move on to now some... Uh, I don't know what we can refer to as pistols, not just revolvers. Yeah, let's do it. And next up, we've got ourselves some iconic pistols here, and these are Lugers. That's right. Swiss, oh. uh, Swiss 1906 Lugers, specifically yeah. the 1906-24. Yeah, I have had a little bit of experience with these guys, disassembly, shooting, and just kind of playing around with them. And I gotta tell you, I absolutely love how these things recoil. I love how they shoot. And all the ones we have are chambered in 30 Luger, correct? That's correct, yeah. yeah. So what can you tell us about these guys? Especially, we haven't had these in a while. We haven't done a video on these in a while. So we probably have a lot of new viewers out there. And if you are new to the channel, thank you for subscribing and viewing. And if you're not subscribed, just go ahead and hit that little button, get subscribed, all right? Because we're always talking about some cool stuff. And it's been a while since we've talked about some surplus. So pay attention, Matt's about to Throw some knowledge your way. Uh, well, so the Swiss military adopted the 1906 Luger as their standard implement. Uh, originally, they were you know made in, in Germany, and then as time went on, they brought more and more in house. So you can actually see on top of here the toggle lock. It says 
Waffenfabrik Bern. Mm -hmm. So this one was actually made in Bern, Switzerland. But DWM in Germany were still making them when they were using the 1906 24 model. Yeah. Uh, very, you know, like distinctively they have the wood grip still. Uh, and, you know, this is kind of the transitional model from the original 06 to the 0629 later they would use. Gotcha. So very cool looking guns. And like you said, these still have the wood grips, which is very neat. Um, and the Waffenfabrik Burn yeah. weapons manufacturer. That's right. Waffenfabrik yeah. is basically just weapons factory. And yeah. Bern is the city it's located in. So it's yeah. a government arsenal in Bern. Gotcha. Uh, one thing that you know we've talked about plenty of times before is that there's always surprises in surplus. And mm -hmm. so one of the things as I we look at these examples, I notice is you'll see that uh, most of these are going to have knurling, some texturing here on the, the grip of the uh, toggle lock. Right. Uh, we have one here actually that does not. So at some point there could have been necessary a replacement part or something, but you can see that this is smooth. That would normally be much yeah. more indicative of a 0629. A yeah. 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 So as you can see. Maybe that'll show up for you guys. You can see the knurling on this one here and how it's a little bit more smooth here. Personally, even though this is a later design, mm -hmm. personally, I prefer that that knurling, right? It's a, it's a little bit easier to get a grip on it and it feels a little bit better, but overall, I, I wouldn't say no to either of them. <laughs> That's for sure. The sight picture on these guys are nice, low profile. What were you gonna say? I was just gonna say, you know, obviously, militaries around the world are always looking for ways to make things cheaper, faster. So yeah. they do remove those details, but it's it's really nice to have some of those right. details. Yeah, absolutely, I can agree with that. And as as you said too, I mean, if as you start a closing or approaching, you know, more of like, hey, we need to produce more of these, you need to expedite your production. Yeah, they're going to start taking away that type of stuff and some of the fancy marking that you typically get with these. Now, some of these two are P marked. Matt, do you want to explain what that P marking means again for anybody that might not know? Absolutely. So in Switzerland, they have a tradition where you are able to purchase a, uh, a sidearm or a firearm that you were issued in. The military and so when that happens they generally send it home to you and it's marked with a p to indicate that private ownership right uh you know a couple more things that we can compare them to the later model so you'll notice this has an open box for the grip safety mm -hmm. uh that's going to be different in the pistol we look at here in a moment um again you know the floor plates of the magazines are also generally going to be wood although on some of these they do appear to be baked light. yeah so they may have been replaced at some point yep. in time yeah but that one there's definitely wood but very cool so neat. So yes, our second up is another variation of the Luger, just a little bit later model. So let's go ahead and bring those guys out. All right. So now we got ourselves even more Luger goodness, but these are the little bit later models. Matt, you want to talk a little bit about these? Absolutely. So these are the 0629. And so by this point, all of them are brought into Switzerland. They're all Swiss burn production. Uh, you can definitely see the difference in the grips. So they've all moved over to a Bakelite grip. Yeah. Uh, also the bottoms of the magazines are all going to be baked light by this point unless you just happen to have one that's not right. matched and is an earlier magazine yeah uh they have a entirely box in grip safety back here and they've lost some of those kind of nice details like the knurling on the the kind of knuckle of the yeah. of the toggle which to say though it's still not like impossible as you guys could tell to actuate the toggle lock it's just again it's just a nice feature to have that knurling you know but hey it's still easy enough to get into and just kind of grab it and then just pull back and there you go yeah, you can see there's some other simplifications they've uh, simplified the safety lever here mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you'll notice there might be kind of a little bit less just finished machining yeah uh, but yeah there's just a more economical to produce version of, of this Right, yeah, and so we're also too looking at other things that I'm noticing, like the simplicity when it comes down to like the Swiss Shield. Instead of having Waffen for Break Burn mm -hmm. printed on the slide like we have with the 06s over here, you can see that it's just simply a Swiss Shield. Easy I mean, enough. You know, that's partly because they were all being made in Bern at this point, yep. so there's no reason to distinguish between yeah, BW in Germany ones. or. You know. Yeah, and then to show off that safety a little bit better too, in comparison, you'll notice that it's a little bit more of what we'll call low profile on this guy and sticks out a little bit more on this one. And then the differences in the grip safety, a little bit larger surface area on this guy here compared to this one. And one thing that I you know, did a little bit of research on is people actually prefer this because some people are saying that maybe for left handies, which would be you, yeah. sometimes that their skin would get pinched right in here between there. And so I don't have that issue, but then again, how often have I shot a Luger left-handed? Not a whole lot, so <laughs> there's that. I mean, I'm kind of wondering who would have the more problem because, you know, left handies, uh, you know, mm. it's facing away from your palm. So, yeah. you know, here it's right in your palm. Right. But then on the other hand, it's in comes your ball of your hand comes yeah. around it. So I don't, I don't know. know. The, the potential of getting pinched is there, but just man up and take it. You're getting pinched by a Luger. <laughs> You're going to enjoy it. All right. But anyway, having shot again, a couple of these, the later models included again, just so awesome. I 
haven't shot a 9mm version yet, but 30 Luger, plenty of experience with, and recoil control with this guy, and just getting you know a good sight picture and everything, super easy. Low light conditions, not at all. Uh, but again, and that kind of comes yeah. with the territory. <laughs> right. Early semi-automatic pistols, yeah, you didn't, they thought like, yeah. sights, what are those for? Uh, yeah. You can actually see that the rear sight's built right into the toggle. So when this yeah. actuates and this yeah, comes back and moves, you, yeah. You, yeah, you lose yeah. it And just to show that to you guys, you can see it here. You can see how the, the rear sight moves when I actuate the toggle lock there just a little bit. So, I mean, yeah, hey, like, like Matt said, sights, who needs those, Who right? needs sights? Yeah, absolutely. But again, there's a picture for the mag for you with the Bakelite base plate on it. And again, just gorgeous pistols. Sure, they're pricey, but whenever we do get a batch of these in, it's it's not a lot of them. Right. You know, I mean, it's like maybe a dozen that I, that I typically see, and here is about that. So, you know, with the newer models and the older, so it's like, wow. Uh, something that might be difficult to find before long, who knows, but that's how surplus goes. So, hey, don't hesitate, reach on out there, pick one up if you can, um, and heck, maybe 30 Luger or something that's still readily available. <laughs> I haven't so. checked the, uh, the the availability of 30 liter. Something tells me that it's never been really available. Yeah. But some of those you know, kind of off calibers are something you can surprisingly find in yeah. times of scarcity. So. All right, cool. So hey, let's say we move on to another semi-auto pistol. Yeah, a little bit more modern. A little bit. A little bit. So next up is arguably one of the most accurate pistols in the world, if not the most accurate pistol in the world, the P210. And this one's gonna be a little bit more of a traditional design, hammer-fired, semi-automatic, magazine-fed, and overall, another gorgeous pistol. Oof. So I find it interesting you say traditional design because it's definitely more modern design. Yeah, but oh, that well, makes yeah, sense. I should say that. Yeah, okay. Makes sense. Uh, it's all, The military designation was the P49 because mm. it was adopted in 1949. We're getting much closer to what we would think of as modern produced handguns. Right. Uh, single action only, but you know, it's got a super low bore access. I can yeah. definitely imagine that that makes the recoil super easy to manage. Yeah. Uh, 9 by 19 millimeter, of course. Yeah, and I, and I should clarify too, probably, arguably, one of the most accurate 9 millimeter yeah. pistols in the world. Uh, still has that funky kind of European uh, mag release, mag -release right, down there right at the bottom. Here. Yeah, as you can see, it's just this little tab that indexes a little bit out, and you pull that back, and there you go. And then just a uh, you know, magazine. Nose it in there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, again, you know, we always like to talk about the fact that you're going to expect some variety when it comes to surplus. So mm -hmm. if you notice here on the slide release, uh, all of these are the same except for one. So one of these yeah. things is not like the other. We've got this little <laughs> kind of staircase yeah. on each of these, except this one, which is just flat. Okay, interesting. So, I don't know, somebody may have not liked that and said, hey, it's protruding too much for my carry gun. <laughs> Who knows? And decided to knurl that down or, you know, take that down, I guess as a say. What's the word I'm looking for? Sand it down. Uh, but it looks professionally done or either a complete replacement. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's it's fully checkered. Yeah, fully I mean, checkered versus the horizontal lines. But anyway, let me just show you guys what we're talking about. So that right there, you'll see that staircase that Matt was just talking about versus the check ring that we have over here. And nowhere near as much of a contour like we have on this guy. Very cool. I mean, it is uh, kind of weighty uh, compared to most modern handguns just because yeah. it is fully steel manufactured. Right. Uh, and of course, it is such a, you know, renowned for, for being accurate as a design that uh, SIGs decided to, to reintroduce it. Yeah, I think they got the, I think it came out SHOT Show last year, 210 uh, Target. So check that guy out. But now, whether or not it holds up to the reputation that the OG has, I'd be curious to see. So uh, let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments section below. Do you think the new production 210 is just as good or even better than the original 210. I'd be curious to hear from you guys. Well, well hot take. Uh, I think that the issue is going to be not, even if it was exactly as good as this gun, yeah. the problem is that other guns in comparison are much better than the competitors were at the time. So That's fair. Okay, that is fair. But you know how a lot of people like the originality. They like the, you know, like, so it's like the new production Colt Python versus the early production. It might have new machining processes, a little bit better, more modern technology in it, and maybe even a little bit more reliable. But somebody's going to say, I like this one better. Why? It's older. All right, teach their own, right? So again, let's go ahead and take a look at that Swiss mark that we have here, right forward of the rear sight. There's that Swiss shield. And from what I can tell too, all of these have them from the ones that we've seen so far at least. Uh, and you know, I don't think we would see one without it, but no guarantees there, because just don't know. I do like the grip on this guy. I will say that. 
very ergonomic grip. The check ring on it is aggressive, but it's not aggressive enough to like, you know, cut up your hands, kind of like what I said before with the Luger. If you feel any type of pain coming from this gun while shooting it, suck it up and enjoy shooting a legendary pistol. Get tougher right? hands. Yeah, <laughs> get um, tougher well, hands. I mean, one thing to keep in mind when you talk about the Swiss Shield is that, you know, these were military shoot guns, but they did make them for the civilian market. Mm -hmm. In fact, they made them in other calibers for the civilian market. So these are oh, not really? millimeter, but mm -hmm. they actually introduced a 30 Luger variant for oh, the wow. civilian market. Yeah. So the Swiss Shield is a great indicator that these are actually military pistols and not some previously just civilian commercial pistol. That's interesting. I did not know that. So very cool. Now the last gun we want to talk about, unfortunately, we don't have here, but uh, can't have them all. Can't have them all. But hey, we do have like a photo of it that you can see, you know, right here. here. And Matt, what do you want to tell us about this guy? So <laughs> the replacement <laughs> of the P210 or yeah. the uh, P49 is the P220, also called the P75. Yeah. Uh, so this is, of course, the direct predecessor to the famous P226, and uh, which is just world renowned as a military hangar. Oh yeah, no, the 226 was standard issue for Navy SEALs for a while and saw a lot of service in the United States military and also military throughout the world. So as you can imagine, it's uh, it's a popular one. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, obviously you could still do well with carrying this gun today. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, when we look at the uh, the P49, you know, yeah. that served from 1949 all the way through 75 basically. Yeah. So that's a Great service life for a sidearm. Oh yeah, absolutely. So very cool stuff, guys. Again, we've got some iconic pistols that we talked about today. And of course, if you missed our top Swiss long guns, go check that video out from yesterday. We had a good time over there too. And uh, I think that'll close it up here. Yeah. Yeah, so again, if you guys are looking to, uh, I don't know, I feel like I would love to start my collection, mm -hmm. you know, my surplus collection with one of these. Uh, but again, you know, we are looking at a price factor, right? These guys uh, are a little hefty there, but at the same time, you think about how often we get these in and how often you see these about, and then compared to the rest of the market, mm -hmm. it's like, oof. Again, just head on over to classicfirearms.com to check them out. We got the P210s, our different models of the Lugers, the revolvers, so check them all out. And of course, the Swiss long gun still, which I'm not talking about anymore because we're gonna talk about it tomorrow. But our current giveaway is this guy that you see right here. A little bit more modern, just, yeah. just a little bit. But well, it's you the, know, the dogs are pretty dated design itself. 70s. Yeah. yeah, it is. But this one specifically is the Styrog A3 M1. So it's coming with that flat top Picatinny rail right up top. No optic, except we've included a Trigicon MRO 3X magnifier that flips off to the side in case you do not need it. And then just flip it back over whenever you want to positively identify a target that might be at distance. And then of course the Enforced WMLX light. It just looks good where it's at. Maybe not the most ergonomic to try to actually quickly turn it on, but oh, actually, you can just take a trigger finger, but hey, who are you? Yeah. Do you sure you want to be in my house? Anyway, uh, this guy's chambered in 5.56223 and is overall just a phenomenal rifle. I really do shoot it. <laughs> I really do enjoy shooting this guy. Is what I'm trying to say. I'm getting it too far ahead of myself here, but that's all right. You guys can head on over to ClassicFirearms.com to get your entries in for this guy here and at no cost to you. And remember, it's not who has the most entries, right, Matt? That's right. All it's it takes is one. Just one. But of course, the more entries you have more chances to win. That's exactly right, all right? So if you uh, are wanting to start a surplus collection and you're just like, man, these things are just, they're, they're awesome, but just a little too pricey, that's okay. Don't start a surplus uh, you know, collection and just get you know, your entries in for a free No, gun. definitely start a surplus collection. <laughs> I mean, surplus is awesome, uh, but they're, they're, these are great options for the dedicated yeah. collector who is willing to make that investment. Uh, there's plenty of other options out there. We'd love to help you. There's plenty of surplus on our website. Oh, yeah. And while course, you're on the website, yeah, just watch a couple of videos, peruse the website, get your entries into here. Uh, make sure to share it with friends. Uh, yeah. And if you are a customer of Classic Firearms, what I want to say is join the Classic Firearms Buyers Group on Facebook because there are a lot of surplus collectors there who like to get a hold of items and show them off, which I absolutely love seeing. So again, if you've purchased something from us before, go request to be part of that group. It's a good time most of the time, <laughs> but of course, get your entries in for this guy. And of course, one of those entries methods is a secret, not so secret code word. And this one is AUG, A-U-G, to get you like 400 extra entries. So don't miss out. And guys, as always, we appreciate your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.